have never ever seen anything like this, obviously. We're having an earthquake, relax. It was a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake. In 1994, Los Angeles was hit by a strong earthquake. It caused chaos on the streets and a blackout. As you, as you look out your window, it's probably pitch dark right now. During the blackout, many people called observatories and even 911. Not because the earth was shaking, but because they saw a giant silvery cloud in the sky. That cloud was, in fact, the Milky Way. Countless stars they had never seen before. You maybe haven't heard much about it yet, but light pollution doesn't merely conceal stars. It seriously affects our health and the environment. When the first light bulb was turned on in the 19th century, it marked a real revolution. Night suddenly became day. It's great. With electric light, we can travel, work, go out, or party whatever the time of day. The pioneers might not have expected their invention to take over the whole world. In fact, in many places, electric light has banished true darkness. In terms of proportional changes to uh, the world, the introduction of this light into the night is one of the most dramatic changes that we've made to the biosphere. This is Christopher Kaiba. He researches artificial light emissions from cities and their impact. Today, more than 80% of the world's population no longer experience dark skies. For example, nights are so bright in Singapore that people can't adapt their vision for darkness. Today, scientists are warning of the dangers of artificial light at night. It, it did mentally affect me, uh, and, and that's when I, I decided to pursue this matter. This is Nilesh Desai, activist in India. His goal, reduce night brightness. Scientists now consider artificial light at night a form of pollution. During the entire development of, uh, of multicellular organisms and, and plants and animals and vertebrates and uh, then mammals and primates and humans, during that whole time, there was this constant signal coming from the environment. This is daytime, this is nighttime, this is the lunar month. And in areas that experience strong light pollution, that signal is effectively, has been dramatically changed. Industrialization over the past century has led to a surge in artificial illumination. So we see that most countries in the world are becoming brighter. This has accelerated in recent decades, particularly in Asian cities. All violet dots on this map show new light sources installed in India between 2012 and 2016. There are various components of light pollution. There's glare, that's when extremely bright light causes visual discomfort. And clutter, irritating groups of bright lights. Light trespass, when light falls where it's not needed or wanted, and sky glow, when artificial light brightens the night sky over cities. It's just, you know, horrible. It is horrible. It's, it's, a, it's a huge sky glow. It's, you know, you, you can just see the orange, orange glow across, across the entire Mumbai, uh, combined with a with lot of air pollution. This is the view from Nilesh's apartment in Mumbai. He lives in the seventh floor with his family and is literally in the spotlight. The lights from nearby streets and the stadium shine directly into their apartment. Lights used to be on till like 12 a.m. or sometimes till 3 a.m. in the night. And, and you know, I, I, I used to get disturbed by those lights, you know, bright lights coming into my room, my, my bedroom. And it definitely impacted me because I could not sleep. Curtains and sleep masks failed to improve the situation. So in 2018, he complained to the authorities, claiming a right to darkness. At first, they ignored him, even though studies link artificial light to eye injuries, sleeplessness, obesity, and maybe even depression. Some studies of shift workers have indicated that exposure to light at night could increase the risk of breast cancer. But why? So there's a hormone uh, that our brain makes called melatonin, which in mammals is a signal of darkness. Uh, and when we don't get that hormone, when, when we don't produce that hormone because we're exposed to so much light in our apartment or as a shift worker, uh, then the whole working of this whole biological clock system becomes problematic. Sleep, digestion and blood pressure are regulated by this biological clock. 
And here, two of the greatest light inventions of recent decades come into play. LEDs and screens. They are very bright and very efficient. And that comes at a price. We may not be able to do anything about bright lights outside, but the lights we have at home are often literally in our hands. The problem is not only brightness, but also color. Blue light from phone displays, screens and LEDs is similar to daylight. While light, in general, can suppress the production of melatonin, blue light from screens and LEDs can do so more strongly. That's why experts at Harvard recommend not using bright screens or LED lights for two to three hours before going to bed, or switching to dimmer and warmer shades of light. Light at night doesn't only threaten our health. There is a tremendous change because um, the increase of brightness at nighttime is new to evolution. This is Sibylle Schröer from the Leibniz Institute of Freshwater Ecology and Inland Fisheries in Berlin. She researches the impact of light on ecosystems. Light is not neutral. <laughs> light has an effect. Corals, birds and many other species of wildlife struggle when it's light at night where it used to be dark. Freshly hatched turtles should make their way into the sea, but lights near the shore can mislead them. They head inland and die. Artificial light at night contributes to the decline in insect populations. One study says the decline amounts to 100 billion every summer in Germany alone. Such light also contributes to a decrease in nocturnal pollination activity. A UK study found that where there is nighttime lighting, trees bud earlier and lose their leaves later than elsewhere. All these various effects on different creatures and plants together affect the environment as a whole. And so predators can maybe hunt better because they can see better. Others um, will stay in the dark, um, smaller species for example, and um, this disturbs the um, predator-prey um, relationships and um, changes whole ecosystems for this. With cheaper and more efficient light sources, the world is getting brighter every year. The International Dark Sky Association estimates that one-third of all outdoor lighting in the US is wasted, fulfilling no purpose. As fossil fuels are still the main source of energy, this contributes quite unnecessarily to air pollution and climate change. So what can we do as individuals? It might sound obvious, but turn on lights only when and where you need it, and then turn it off again or let a motion sensor turn it on and off for you. Use lampshades, for instance, to block unwanted stray light. Use lights with a warmer tone. They can be just as efficient. And lower the intensity when possible. Dimming is the magic word here. Entire cities, even entire countries can adopt such solutions. France, for example, has banned sky beams and in some places set times when lights in public spaces have to be dimmed or switched off, as well as capping the brightness of lamps in ecologically sensitive areas. I am afraid that people don't realize this is a serious issue, and and you know it, it needs there needs to be a lot of awareness, rules and regulations as to how we install lights and where we install lights. After protests from citizens like Nilesh Desai, Mumbai politicians have signaled they're open to reducing light pollution. They have called on the Indian Ministry of Environment to implement laws. Nilesh Desai hopes it won't take a blackout for the people of Mumbai to see the Milky Way. One day, or rather, one night. <laughs> <laughs>